So one interesting thing I read in the Miami Herald this morning is that Feeding South Florida, the group distributing food in Miami Beach, was mentioned in the Miami Herald as inside of these food boxes, there are letters from Donald Trump saying, here is your food. So they're distributing political propaganda. We seem to have this problem recurring again and again in the city of Miami Beach. If you see any political propaganda at all in our Miami Beach food boxes, please let me know. It's a recurring theme, and uh, this politicization of our food giveaways is disturbing, whether it's by the president or by uh, David Richardson, whomever it is. Uh, we would like to keep food distributions apolitical. I think that's the right thing to do. Um, one final part of my monologue is I have to talk a little bit about the uh, Miami Beach uh, Marina Park referendum, which is really the Miami Beach private luxury condo giveaway. Um, also known as Marina Park. Um, I urge the residents of Miami Beach to yeah. vote no. This is a giveaway of our public land to a private entity. Uh, as residents and stewards of our community, stewards of the public trust, uh, we should not sell our land at 20% of its real value. We are selling off the Miami Beach Marina for 99 years. Um, the parking lots, the development rights for a huge 385 foot private luxury condo tower for $55 million. Meanwhile, two empty lots on Star Island recently sold for $37 million. So you do the math. There was no bid on this deal. It was just a private application and now a political campaign where there is a developer who has uh, unlimited funds uh, running this campaign versus a small group of activists and residents that are tasked with fighting this public land grab. We'd like you to vote no on November 3rd because we need to stop, put a, put an end to these referendum giveaways of our public assets. If you would like a vote no sign, and I have it right here. I'm holding it right here. It is bright neon yellow. If you'd like a, please uh, leave a comment here and I will personally bring one to your home. I will bring you a vote no sign. So on to today's programming. I have with me this morning, Russell Rywell, he is a candidate for the Miami-Dade County Public School Board. Um, this November, just so that you know, we do have the school board candidates on the ballot. Um, and he and, and whoever wins this race, um, you guys are in a runoff, uh, will be replacing our representative many years, Dr. Martin Karp. There are no term limits on the school board, on the school board. So this is a very important seat because technically you could stay there forever once you get elected. <laughs> one of nine uh, board members. Uh, and remember, the school board has a tremendous budget, $5.13 billion, almost as much as Miami-Dade County's $7 billion budget. And nothing is more important than the quality of our public education. So welcome. I'm glad you came Thank out you. this morning. Thank you very much for having me. I think we're socially distant enough that I'll take off my mask. Better. Maybe you guys can hear me a little better. It's my pleasure to be on here and to talk about issues that are near and dear to my heart the education of students that I've been working on for the last 20 years of my life. Well, I was reading your bio this morning, which is very impressive, and I'm not sure if you've gotten this message out to the masses. So Russell is homegrown, born in Miami Beach, went to Treasure Island, Nautilus, a beach high. You were president of this beach and debate team when you were in high school? That's correct. With our mayor, Dan Gelber. Were you guys in the he same was, year? He was a, a couple of years before me. Uh, the city manager was the year before me, Jimmy Morales. So uh, we all go back to that same debate teacher, Ralph Carey, that shaped our lives. Who was better at debating, Morales or Gelber? We all did different <laughs> things. So that's an easy one to answer. Jimmy did the more direct one-on-one -on -one debates or two-on-two -two debates. Uh, the mayor did... Uh, model Congress, where okay. he did the legislature, which obviously prepared him. And I did more extemporaneous speaking and oratory. So we all had our specialties. So this is kind of right up your alley, only in this pandemic, you really haven't been able to get out in the community and interact live and debate. So <coughs> you haven't been able to use probably your strongest skill. Yes. I mean, you know, Sadly, there aren't very many school board debates. In fact, we haven't had one direct debate. We've had a few candidate forums. But uh, any time that my opponent would like to come on a show like this and have a back and forth uh, discourse, I would be more than happy to uh, contrast our views and try to inform the voters. And I did reach out to Lucia's husband. Sorry, Lucia, I didn't have your phone number. Um, David Geller, and I told him that you were going to be on the show, and I invited Lucia on this week, um, and she declined this week, said that she had something to do. 
uh, possibly will be on the show next week. Um, your story is really interesting. First of all, you graduated with a degree in math. Oh, I can't imagine like an, an entire bachelor, <laughs> bachelor of science in math. What is RPI? I've never heard of, what is RPI? RPI stands for Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. It's where the oldest that? science technology school in the United States, uh, even before MIT, where I went to graduate school. Established in 1824 outside of Albany, New York. Okay. So you got the, a, ma a math degree in RPI. You're such a nerd. Okay, I'm just <laughs> kidding. And then you went to MIT, where you did get your Master's of Science and Finance. Then you went to Wall Street, where you worked for Solomon Brothers, got sent overseas, and you were trading G7 currency options. That sounds pretty complex. Yeah, I was actually running the, um, the business there. It was a multi-million dollar business. And uh, the G7 is just the major currencies at the time, the, uh, the currency options. And the trading desk was managed out of Singapore, so that's where I was based. But we, we did the pricing and warehousing and management for all the sales offices for Citigroup across the Asia Pacific region. So. I can't even imagine what that was like. What, year, what, what years were those? I was there from uh, the end of 99 to uh, 2001. Okay. And then I came back to teach uh, right in the beginning of the fall 2001. So that's right when the internet kind of intersected with Wall Street and these huge trades started to happen. And within a few seconds, everything could change. You could make a, you know, a billion dollars just by trading something faster than someone else. And they actually built these broadband networks. Have you heard that? How they brought, how Wall Street built a broadband network between Chicago and New York just to beat the system? Well, well it's, it's interesting because the timing was very important to me. You know, I, I had always looked forward to giving back after you know, working in finance and gaining some financial security. And one of the things that was going through my mind in the 2000s, remember everyone was worried about Y2K, but then it didn't happen. And there was a massive rally in uh, the, the tech stocks. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was probably a good point to take, you know, take some money off the table and then move back and, and raise my family, you know, the way I was raised. So the timing actually worked out and that, that sort of tech revolution and then uh, sadly 9-11 all sort of came about at that same time. At the same time, so you moved back to Miami after being very successful in the financial world and you decided to teach. Yes. What? Nobody ever does that, do they? You and David Dermer are maybe the only two people I know that are tremendously successful and then go back into the public school system uh, to, to teach. You'd be surprised how many people tell me they want to do that, but not very many people actually do it. It's hard because, you know, you can always put it off for another year and say, well, I could, I could just be a little bit more secure if I work another year. But sooner or later, you just... You have to take the plunge. And, you know, the way I saw it was, you know, and I think my classmates from debate that you mentioned would say the same thing, that so much of our success was, was due to the public school system and the education we got at Miami Beach Senior High School. And I thought, wouldn't that be great if I could give back to that? And I had already had a passion for teaching even when I was on the job in finance. I taught internal bond math classes and lectured at Fordham. So I was pretty sure I could pull it off. Tremendous that you went back to school. Before I say anything else, Bernie, you are sighing and you are moaning. And are we not up online on Facebook Live? Is it not working? It's cutting, so we're going to take it down and put it back up. Oh, that, nobody's going to watch it if it's cutting out like that. Really? That's the one thing I asked. Okay. <laughs> we're going to have a fight over this. This is what happens when a couple produces a show. When it, things go smooth, okay. the rest of the day is wonderful. When it doesn't, forget it. He's in the crapper. Um, just kidding, Burn. I appreciate everything that you do. Sorry. Well, we can still share it after the fact. We can, yeah, we can upload it afterward and it will come up. So we'll just have to wait and go home and download it and then re-upload this. And I think that's the best thing. So you went to Ransom Everglades first and you built up a, a, a national championship team at Ransom, correct? Yeah, you know, that was an interesting thing. You know, I had gone back to Ransom uh, because I was in Singapore, I couldn't even interview with the public school system remotely. Everything was on paper back then. Um, I got the job at Ransom as a math teacher because that was my uh, degree mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, math and physics. And then they said, you know, well, what activity are you going to do? 
And I said, well, you know, decent tennis player, basketball player, because I thought they meant a sport. And they were like, well, what did you do in high school? And I was like, oh, well, that was speech and debate. And then she just looked at me and said, you're starting a speech and debate program. We it's hard to find speech uh, speech professors, even at Miami-Dade College, when there were very few people that had, you know, master's or PhDs in communication, speech and debate. So they're in. Yeah, no, I mean, look, the, you know, when you run a campaign, you see how important these skills are. Like people like that that are good are in, are in very high demand. And so uh, originally it was just a club and then it grew into a course and then it grew into a big program. I found my passion really working with the kids on the weekends, traveling with them, seeing how motivated they were, seeing how it changed their, their whole view on school and society. And uh, gradually the program built. And in 2007, uh, we won the national championship in public forum debate. Congratulations. Thank you. And then after you won that, debate in 20, 2007, you decided to go back to your alma mater, Beach High? Yes. Become a high tides and bring your skills there? Yeah. Thank I, you for that, by the way, because it shouldn't only be private school students that benefit from somebody of your caliber. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and I think that's one of the reasons why I'm running for school board too. Like it shouldn't even just be one school, right? We have 350,000 people in the school district and we need to really get those skills out there. But getting back to, to Beach High, you know, it had this great tradition of speech and debate programs going back to the late 20s. And the program had really fallen down to basically nothing, a club that might have gone to one tournament during the year. And um, it had always been my goal to go back there. And I think it reached a point where I was like, look, you know, they, they, they really need to rejuvenate this program. And um, the great Dr. Seidner, who was a principal that turned the school around to an A-rated school was there. And um, after spending some time convincing her, you know, first I had a volunteer and I had to work with students during lunch and work my way up to part-time and then getting full-time, um, we got the program going and it was great. Look, I, I have benefited from it. We have to go to a commercial break right now. I'm here with a Miami-Dade School, Miami-Dade County Public School Board candidate, uh, Russell Rywell, resident of Miami <clears throat> Beach. And we will be back shortly to hear why he's running, what is his vision for Miami-Dade County Public Schools, how he's going to fend off all of these lobbyists, and much, much more. We'll be back shortly. Thanks. Are we on the air? 12 to Did you cancel it? No, I mean, I'm not canceling it. We'll, we can cancel it when it's done, and then we'll Did you try to plug up. into the AT&T connection? I can't right now. I mean, at this point, I, I mean, just don't remember it. it. I, no, I always I'm get, recording it. I always get more views sharing it Later, afterwards. Yeah. Live. So, you know, we'll I get thousands we'll, of views. We'll after, take it back. Get, like, a we'll computer. take it down and we'll put it back up. Right oh, because I like to get that dynamic. It's that bad? It's, you know, it's good. I mean, it's 95. What bothers me is that people do uh, log on and then it skips in and out, and that's very frustrating. Right now, so they once up. they do that and then they give up, yeah, 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 and no, sometimes our content is really. Good. We're live right now okay. on the camera. So, so do you feel like you're getting uh, good information and uh, the, the people out there are learning a little bit about me? I think so, so far. Yeah, I was really impressed when I read your bio yesterday. Um, I kind of knew, you know, <laughs> third hand, you know, I kind of heard from all of my, my kids. Just so that you know, and, and full disclosure, uh, Russell was my son's uh, mentor. I would say you were a mentor, yeah, Russell, we Scott, and Alex. We will when, when we go back on the air. But I credit you with Pablo's success. I think winning that tournament um, really changed him because I think he felt you know confident after that. It was, imagine had he applied himself more, the heights that he could have. It was that ninth grade year I missed him. I could have gotten him <laughs> one more year earlier. But, I mean, it, it, no, but even now, the way that he speaks to me, he helped me in my congressional campaign with, with my debate skills. He would say, that's a terrible way to express that, <laughs> Mom. Why don't you, you know, talk about something else? So I've seen what you do. No, it's great. You know, and, and that, that background, by the way, helps gain credibility with the students, too. Like, that's one 30 of seconds. little bits of magic that I can use. Tell me because, when it starts, please. Because they, they know that I've done important things and succeeded, so they... They want to know when I say, like, this is how it works and this is what's really useful. No, they really respect you. And, you know, they, my kids, tra Pablo traveled across the country with you. I mean, he yeah. really got a completely. Tell me when. Tell me when. We're on. We're on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Welcome back to the bottom line with Kristen Rosen Gonzalez. I'm here with Miami Dade County Public School Public Schools School Board candidate. That's a mouthful. Russell Rywell, the resident of Miami Beach. He was my son's mentor and debate coach. He made Pablo, he turned Pablo into a debate champion, which was pretty amazing. Um I'm I will always be grateful to Russell Rywell. Um Lucia was also taught Pablo, I believe. So Pablo was kind of um, taught by both of the candidates running for school board. But one thing I'll say, Russell, is that over the past few months, um, the kids that hang around my house, a lot of them are in speech and debate, Cheska, Michelle, Malley, uh, Scotty, Alex, even Guido. I see them come to my house after knocking on doors for you. Almost, you know, all summer long, they were all wearing your T-shirts all day long. And I think that's pretty impressive that these kids want to go out there into the community and share what you've done for them. Uh, I'm, I'm so proud of what they've accomplished and so happy that they want to give back um, and, and support me. Uh, I think maybe we even will get a couple to call in um, on the phone lines. But, you know, the thing that's really impressive and where they knocked on doors or called people, you know, they were, the people were so receptive because there's nothing like a student going, look, forget all the campaign literature and all that stuff you get. This guy was my teacher for three years. He changed my life. I am successful today in large part, or at least in some part because of him. And you need to put him on the school board. And you would not believe the feedback that I got from voters and people that I didn't know saying, oh, today a student knocked on my door and I was so impressed with them. I don't know anything about you, but you know, you have my support. It's amazing. You travel with these students across the country. Pablo traveled with you to New York, Chicago. I mean, so many major cities. I don't know how you do that, giving up all your time to travel with these kids and keep make sure that they behave themselves and they don't always. It's a challenge, you know, and actually the hardest part, the, the traveling uh, for the most part is, is a lot of fun. It's a little stressful, but you get to see them in a whole different light. And if they're really motivated for the tournament, you know, I had, I've had students knock on my door at one o'clock in the morning going, hey, I just thought of a new argument. You know, and, and that's something you, you answer these. Little- you never get in a regular <laughs> class. Yeah, because I'm there. You know, like what else am I going to do? Um, but the the hard part is really all the paperwork and planning that goes into it, and and that's something that I would like to streamline on the uh, the district. Okay, so very successful. Took Ransom Everglades. Now Beach High be, has become a national uh, championship debate team. Yes. I can attest Third to that. Third in the nation two years Third ago. in the nation. And one of the proudest days as a mother was when Pablo called me and said that he had become the state debate championship, which I'm still like incredulous about even now. <laughs> and that I can attribute to you. So you were dedicated, hardworking, moving forward. Now you've now you're running for office. What's that been like the past year? It's um, it's like drinking from the fire hose, you know. Right? It's yeah. Well, y- you would know, you know, as well. It's one thing to have a vision. It's one thing to even think of yourself as a communications teacher, but it's a whole nother thing to try to convince tens of thousands of people that you deserve a position on the school board. Well, out of five candidates, you made it into a runoff. That's okay? correct. So, and that's pretty impressive right there. And you have several very um, influential members in our community supporting you. Uh, Dan Gelber and I both, you know, support Russell. Now that <laughs> should say something, okay? And we you don't, know. I don't agree with almost anything. I do agree with his mask policy. I, I watched him this morning on uh on Jim DeFeedy and he was talking about masks and everything. So that's pretty, that's pretty impressive. I'm very glad that you had a fight with your campaign manager, Christian Albert. That was really something that was holding me back um, because I didn't respect him. And I, you know, even though some of his candidates like uh, Daniela Levinkava, you know, she's a great candidate just with a, a bad campaign manager. So you are now on your own and who's running your campaign now? Um, Jesse Manzano Plaza. Okay. Shane Conley. Yeah. All right. So you've got a new team. 
He nixed Ulvert, which is already points, added points in my book. Uh, Ulvert's not a good guy. Who knows what he says or uh, demands from his candidates when they win. Let's talk a little bit about the school board, Miami-Dade County Public Schools. So you have this uh, superstar superintendent, Alberto Carvalho, He's running a pretty tight ship. Many times people say that, you know, he's the one making the decisions and not necessarily the school board. He kind of reminds me of Gaston on Beauty and the Beast. You see how his hair is like perfectly quaffed and he's like, I'm Gaston, I'm Alberto Carvalho. So (laughs) what do you think of the job he's done? Is he transformative? Yes. Look, you know, you have to look at the body of work and then you have to look at at what have you done for me lately. Mm -hmm. Um, The superintendent turned a district that was in financial hardship um, with failing schools and a poor graduation rate to one that is an A-rated district, no F schools, only one D school, uh, much higher graduation rates, much higher test scores, so many great metrics. Um, and that is not an easy thing to do, you know, to do that on such a large scale with such a large uh, bureaucracy under you. You know, so I, I think he's a man of vision. He's a man of science. He's someone that's delivered. Uh, recently, we've certainly had our issues with the execution of the return to school and the online platform. And so um, we have some work, we have some work to do. That whole thing is so bizarre. The K-12, there was the donation. Then I read in the newspaper that uh, there was this $1.6 million donation, and that was for gift cards for all of the teachers who signed up for K-12 by the Sunday night. I'm not sure if that was really the case or if it was or if it wasn't. I don't think he should be completely uh, judged by that unless that donation was for something else. Uh, and, you know, and why spend that money on technology? But I guess when you're looking at it, that was, did he use emergency powers? Yeah, I mean, he was he was given power, I believe, under the CARES Act. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, he was able to do it. Um, the board has since become more active and involved in it. Um, I think the, the greatest problem was, I mean, the, the process was solid. The idea of surveying the parents, trying to provide an option for those that wanted to stay home, trying to provide an option for those that wanted to stay, send their kids to school, p- creating a health task force to determine when it was safe to go back to school, what the metrics were. All that was very solid. What, where the breakdown was, was the actual platform, both the county's platform for the access of that many people, we know about the cyber attack, and the K-12 system. Yeah, I forgot that that kid from South Miami infiltrated the system. He's not in jail, is he? I I don't know if he's- Probably being recruited. Uh, Yeah, he should be teaching computer science. But but yes, so, you know, the idea was you needed a platform where you could go back and forth between online and offline, physical and online if you needed to. That was the idea. And we also also, uh, wanted to provide teachers with the resources you know, to supplement their curriculums because they were sort of building the plane as we flew in the spring. The problem was it never really materialized quick enough for the opening of schools. I was talking with teachers the week before and they're like, we don't even have access yet. You know, we're, we're watching videos from a distance. When can we get into the system? And then they didn't get into the system till you know, only a, a few days. Most of them got in at the end of the week before, a couple even on the weekend. And then all of a sudden the system went live and they tried to bring everybody in at once. The system, the IT didn't support it. The system went in and out. We had the cyber attacks and the platform itself was very jittery. And so we ended up with uh, eventually, at least there was a plan B, pivoting back to pivoting back to what we did with uh, Zoom and Microsoft Teams, and, and that's where virtual went. Look, at the end of the day, teachers are pretty resourceful. Most of those teachers who couldn't log, log on, they knew how to log into the portal anyway, turn in work, they've Zoomed. I mean, they just kind of switched it up after, you know, not being oh, able to log in. The teachers were amazing. I think more than anything else, it was just the stress of like trying to log in and, you know, being worried that your attendance wasn't going to be counted. So there wasn't like a streamlined message, you know, just everybody could have stayed calmer. I know that we have Maria on the line who's calling in. Maria? Hello? Hello. Hi. So I, just, I just wanted to talk about Mr. L because I'm hearing all of these great things and I just really want to enhance um, 
all of these positive qualities that I'm hearing about. So I've been fortunate enough to have known Mr. Rywell for the past four years now and definitely can only think of positive things to say about him. As one of his students, I've experienced firsthand how dedicated and involved he is in the community, um, especially in the educational sector, of course, because he's been working on that for about more than a decade now. So, so wait, so definitely- you are a Beach High student? Yes, I've yeah, I've, I've known Ryle for the past four years. Um, I've been part of his speech and debate. Um, it's part of that club. Did you and know my son Pablo? Has, yes, I do, and I know your son, uh, your daughter Francesca as well. So wait, what grade are you in now, Maria? Are you graduated? Yeah, I'm, yes, I'm. A, no, I haven't graduated, but I'm a senior right now. So it's my last year. Ah, okay. So I'm sure you've probably been to my house too. There were there have been many a parties, okay, at my house. It's definitely party yeah. central. I'm so glad that Pablo and Alex and Scott are away at school right now because I couldn't handle another beer pong <laughs> outside, especially when we were all supposed to be quarantined and there was like oh gatherings my in my backyard. Um, of course, which you were probably not attending. Oh, okay. We have to go to a break, Maria, but stay on the line. We're going to come back and we're, I'm going to ask you some stuff about... Uh, Coach Rywell. Okay. Of course. Thanks. We'll be right back. Thank you. In the bottom. Please. Uh, what are you let's uh, delete from there. Get off. Get off. Why? I just, I'm, we're going to put a post back later. It's, it's a disaster. What happened? I don't know. It's, you it's, have five people watching. You can't just delete it with you five have to. people why, watching. Why don't we have it with uh, Maria at least? Just and then announce that you're Why don't you go live again? It. You can't go live? I can't. I don't know. I can't. I don't know what, what to do, do right mean? now. What do you mean? You can't plug into the system like you did before? It's Why don't you just right plug now. in? I can't. I don't know what's happening. Let's stop and we'll repost it again this afternoon, the whole thing. Can, can we get through Maria, maybe? <laughs> she did just post. delete it. Oh, okay. No, I want you to delete her like right now. We're going to post this whole thing from like scratch. Know, It'll be but... perfect. Yeah, but then we won't have Maria out. Yeah, we will. Yeah, yeah, we'll have Maria. We'll have Maria. This we're gonna record. The, no, we're Maria, recording. Maria's on the video. Believe no. it or not, all of this is being recorded. Burton, you gotta chill. I'm fine with it. I mean, what? Delete it. Stop it. I deleted it. Okay. I deleted. Delete I'm sorry to anybody who was watching the other before. One. But I don't want it. I didn't want to delete it. And by the way, I think we're up on the other one too. Did you run it on both of my Facebook pages when you did it? I did. Why did we both. have to delete it? If somebody's watching and it's skipping a little bit, I'd rather not delete it. They're still on. Yeah, we're still on. And yeah, Russell on. shared it. So yeah. it makes it very hard to focus. It's all right, whatever. When he gets, I don't, I don't stress out about stuff like this. This is so small in the Tell big picture. Tell me when we back. But it is frustrating when people are trying to listen and something's skipping in and out. Can you solve this between this week and next week? I don't know. I'm going to try. Because you can have some people under stress. Yes. Yeah. So. Formal. And I'm one of those. So, um, Maria will be back. I'm sure she's watching. Is she watching it on Facebook Live or just calling in and listening? I think she knows about the radio. I mean, I she's sure listening she's to it on the radio. She's to it she on can't the radio. hear you right now. She's listening to the commercials. Okay. Yeah, she, um, I mean, I'll, I can mention it if I want, but she came in, she and her partner came in fourth, I think, at Blue Key last year. Really? In duo. So. Who was her partner? Daphne Chalodowski, you know the Chalodowskis, Arthur and Sherry, mm-hmm. who love them, their daughter. Um, and Maria also, uh, she's great. I mean, she's she's done so much on her own. Tell me when you're coming back. It's been crazy for the it's been crazy for the kids this year because I think Cindy just said that it went down. It went down. That one she just deleted. Well, can you put it back up? Can you go live again? I can. Can you please? I cannot. Yes, you can. She says they're still watching. I don't know how to do it. The bottom line with Krista Rosa Gonzalez. We're full of technical difficulties today. If you were watching us on Facebook Live, I guess we were down and we're back up. Anyway, let's jump right back in. Maria, are you there on the line? Yes, I am. Okay, so you are friends with Franny in 12th grade. By the way, Maria, have you been able to take your SAT because Franny said that it was canceled a bunch of times? Were you able to oh take it? Oh my gosh. It? It's been canceled like five times, but I actually took it yesterday at Beach High. Um, it was very limited seating, though, so I got lucky enough to have a seat. I just I just reserved for Franny on November. So how was it? How was taking the SAT? I mean, I've taken it before. I feel like doing it with a mask and my glasses fogging up. It was definitely very a, a very strange experience. But um, I think everybody took the necessary precautions and the 
distancing was perfect and everything. Um, How could they and count the I, SAT I think it was a this very year? Good experience. With, she had to take it with her mask on, her glasses fogging up. It's stressful enough without having to take that test with your mask and glasses. Mm-hmm. They said that a lot of colleges and universities are waiving it, but we That's don't. That's true. But I, I don't know. I, you're better off taking it. So Franny's finally going to take it. Um, so why would students benefit from your teacher and debate coach mentor, Russell Rywell, being on the well, school board? Why should they vote? To, why Why should they vote for for Mr. Rywell? I think, I think that the most important thing they should consider is just how involved and dedicated he is. I mean, I've experienced this firsthand. He's always put his students um, first, and I'm just so shocked to have known, like I've seen someone and um, like grown these past couple of years, knowing that there's someone there supporting me along the way, and definitely coming from a financially disadvantaged home. Um, that has never like limited me, and Raul has always seen the potential I have, and so he's always pushed me to um, set these goals for me, even when I thought like I, I didn't think I could achieve them myself, but um, he's been that mentor there, always supporting me and giving back, and he's been doing that for the last 20 years, so I think that's something that we all really need to consider. I mean, you're so well-spoken. Maria, you're going to make me cry. Uh, oh, he really is tearing no. up. But um, <laughs> I, I will say this, and the people should know, you know, that each student has an incredible story. And you and your partner, Daphne, with no speech and debate, you know, formal camps, um, have basically on your own through hard work become amazing at your event, Duo and Turf. I mean, you came in fourth at the Blue Key tournament, which is a big Southeast regional tournament. And when I asked you guys, you know, if I could get you the funding, would you go to nationals? You guys said yes. You went uh, two years ago. You went last year when it was virtual and you had to do it split screen video. I mean, the amount of time and effort that you guys put in is really what motivates me to try to, you know, give you the best experience educationally Mm -hmm. possible. No, I really, really appreciate that. And I mean, that goes to show just how much time, like, I feel like my motivation also, I could see that you put so much time and effort into really believing in us. And so why not take a chance and see it for myself and go on and push forward? And I think you've always been that force behind behind us, pushing us and making sure that we get things done and that we're proud of our work. And I just really appreciate that. So this is what being this is why teaching is so powerful and important and the influence that you've had on, on their lives. And Maria, I mean you're so well spoken. And I'm sure that you're going to, I hope you're, I'm crossing my fingers that you're going to get into whatever college or university that you want to and that you're applying for. When you see Franny, will you please tell her to study for the SAT? Of course, I'll text her now. She's driving me crazy. Text her right now. You can have her call in too. And thank you for calling in because this is important. People really should know uh, just how hard Russell Rywell has worked in our public yeah. school systems and why he, he would make a great school board representative mm-hmm. so thanks yeah for- because I, thank you so much i just want to just um end with this saying that i just really don't see mr rival just as a political figure i see him as a person that genuinely cares about me about other students like me and i'm just really proud that there's someone out there that really wants to continue to help out the community and it just further it more i'm so proud of you too maria wow me too <laughs> Thank you for calling in. Your testimony okay, is very bye-bye. powerful. Have a great Thanks. day. Whew. See, I mean, this is why I'm so impressed by you. And I know that it's true because I've witnessed it. And I've seen uh, these debate dinners where all of the students and all of the parents show up and uh, you these award ceremonies that you have and the parents that host you. Um, and I, I guarantee I know the Hillary Frankels of the world are out there saying, you know, vote Rywell because it's part of a family almost. It is. And it feels like a family. And one of the great things about it is not just getting to know the students. Debate has to involve the parents in terms of judging the tournaments and supporting them in travel and hosting a tournament at Beach High and, you know, involving administration. So it is it's like it is a village and it really takes support from everybody to make it. And, uh, you know, one of the things I've missed just these last month or so when I've been on a leave of absence for the the runoff 
is that that feeling of camaraderie of teamwork with the students with the parents in in building something something better and uh, I think that if we could capture that magic or some of that magic that we have on a school basis and spread it to more schools throughout the district we could really take what's been a Miami miracle in terms of getting the basics improved in our district, take it to the next level and let's get these kids prepared for the 21st century with the kind of skills that Pablo and Maria have. Wow, if you could spread that around the district, we would be very, very lucky. I, sometimes I feel like there's so much money in the school dis, school board district, but it's just misspent or not necessarily allocated. There's a lot of what I feel to be waste because it is such a large bureaucracy, like you mentioned. And I'd like to talk a little bit about the beautification of our schools. One, things, one thing that bothers me as I walk through Miami-Dade County Public Schools are the fluorescent lights, the cinder blocks. These are new buildings that we built. They're windowless buildings. We spent no money on landscaping afterward. What could be done to take the buildings that we have and maybe add in some windows, add in better lighting, make it less institutionalized and more of a place where, you know, more we have to study in beautiful places because it, 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 it creates a higher level of thinking and inspires us to learn. Correct. It's true. You know, and, and the science is clear. Like if you put plants in a room, not only are people healthier, but they're happier. And what we've seen throughout the district is that parents are trying to do this. Individual schools are trying to do this. I was at uh, Southside Elementary in K through eight now, and um, they had a, um, a little organic garden that the, you know, the local groups and businesses had set up, even though it was in downtown Brickell. Um, at Miami Beach High, we had a, a garden that the Soil Club did, and the PTSA is working very hard on a beautification project for the for the courtyard. But I think you know it really needs to be taken to the next level at, at the school board and make it a real initiative of the district. So it's not done piecemeal, where one school might have a strong you know, PTA or PTSA, so they can try to do these things. Like, let's take it to all the schools, particularly the, the schools in the core that have been neglected. You know, uh, a lot of those schools like uh, NMB, mm -hmm. where I've went to debate tournaments when I was a student and I've gone, you know, as a teacher, it's not that different. And it's one of those, you know, built in the, 60s sort of anti-riot style where there's not a lot of windows and it's concrete and you know it's it's just it's not up to par for where we are today and i realize we have security concerns and that's going to be paramount to make sure that we can keep our students safe both from the virus and from active shooting events but there has to be more that we could do you know my memories of treasure island where it was an open school. You know, we used to build. Yeah, I went to Bay Harbor Elementary and there were there was lots of light, lots of sunshine. There was an indoor, you know, to change classes, we had to go outside, which was really nice. And you got, you didn't feel like you were in this institution. So the fact that we built a lot of these schools, by the way, in the past 20 years, um, it really bothers me. I don't know who the architect was that decided that we were going to make build windowless institutional schools. That was such a poor decision. I know that there was a billion dollars in bond money. Has that been spent already? Um, there's still there. There is the GOB, the General Obligation Bond Committee, and they have planned out all the projects uh, going forward. But you know, right now we're in a new world uh, with COVID. Mm -hmm. And we are in a new world with funding. And we really have to, A, we may have to do more funding like that. But we, and we probably will, but we have to reconsider Wait, wait, everything. wait, wait, wait. The school board has a billion dollar in bonds and they're taxing us extra to pay extra salaries for teachers, which is fine. But we, they cannot bond any more money out at this point. Well, I mean, it would it have to be a referendum. I a mean, referendum. it wouldn't be like the school board would say you're going to do this. I just feel like there's so much money that's being mismanaged, you know, um, at the school board. I think that there's a high level of corruption. And I will tell you why. Number one, there are no term limits. So there are certain members of the school board that have been there for many, many decades. And they are insiders. They have a long list of the same lobbyists that I see in Miami Beach that... Yeah 
But I, I just I'm hoping that when you go there, if you know, if when you get elected, um, that you will consider, you know, definitely not selling off our headquarters, maybe negotiating better contracts, really looking at, you know, it, it's the same people that work in not just municipalities and state government contracts and but also our school board contracts. And I think that that money could, you know, do you think we'll see a change? I'm not convinced, but. Well, this is, this is what I think. And this is important, you know, that the, your viewers know about me. Um, I started teaching at a point in my life where I didn't need to do it for the income. Um, I did it because I wanted to. I don't have to be on the school board for financial reasons. Um, I am a mostly self-funded candidate. So I feel like I have the independence to make the tough decisions. And I'm also not a career politician. Like this is not a stepping stone for me to run for some other office. Because you could really be on for life after this. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't anticipate being on for life. You know, my, my, my life has been split maybe in sort of 10 year pieces. You know, I was in research and then I was in trading and then I was in private school and then I'm in public school. And so I, I, I'm one of those people that likes to move on and try different things once I feel like I've accomplished what I set out to do. So, you know, I don't see myself as a, as a lifetime school board member. I will be there till I feel like I get the job done. But, you know, someone has to come in there with a financial background that's run a business, that's studied finance that can pour through a 300 page budget and Doesn't check all the line items. Who is bidding on all of these projects? Is it the same people? Are the same architects building the same unacceptable buildings and probably getting paid top dollar for it? Because I think we could do so much better. And just to be clear, the women that have been on the school board for decades, I admire a lot of them. I listen to those meetings and that chair, uh, Perla Tabaris hantman is she still the chair of the school board? She is. Uh, she's amazing. I love to listen to the cadence of her voice when she speaks, uh, you know, but my, my big worry is that, you know, she's when, when you've been there for so long that, you know, you just do business with the same people just because it's comfortable because you know them. So we do need somebody to go in there and say, is this really the way that the money should be spent? Do we have to go to a break right now? Okay. We're going to a break, but we'll be back. I'm here with Russell Rywell, uh, Miami Beach High uh, speech debate champion coach and also candidate for the Miami-Dade County School Board. Okay. Okay. So overall, going nicely through the agenda, which I think is good. Stella will be great to talk to. You get a parent's perspective in addition to yours. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and then I'll we'll just close up with like you know why you want to do this. Right. What are the changes going to be? It goes by pretty quickly, but I'm going back on a minute or two. We'll speak to Stella for probably three to five minutes. Um, and then we'll go through. You can talk about the funding, uh, teachers union if you want. I didn't get into the school vouchers. Um, we can skip. And while we're not on the air, I will talk about the school board headquarters. I'm not expecting you to opine on this, but I will have you know that Crescent Heights, the company uh, owned by Russell Galbit, has a bid right now to uh, basically turn the school board headquarters into a luxury condo and give them two stories. 30 seconds. And they're using the... Miami Omni CRA, and they bought the surrounding properties, and I'm afraid that the school board's going to be pressed. Should they be giving up their headquarters? Tell me when. Realistically. No, they shouldn't. We have Stella now? Yeah. Tell me when. <laughs> He's like, get me out of this. Tell me when. Okay. Now. Back to the bottom line with Kristen Rosen Gonzalez. I was just making this Russell Rywell, the school board candidate, very uncomfortable uh, because I was talking about the school board headquarters uh, being sold to Crescent Heights and Russell Galbit and turning that into a luxury condominium and giving the school board a couple of stories. I really hope that whoever gets elected 
says no to this deal. And I do think that they might be saying no to it because this has been in the pipeline for a while now. And I, I, I checked on the news this morning surrounding the sale of the school board headquarters for a private development. And uh, nothing has happened since May. And that could be because of coronavirus. So that means that they have not voted on it and they probably are, you know, uh, trying to avoid that vote because I'm sure that they don't want this. See, you don't have to opine on this right now. You haven't gotten elected yet, but when you do get elected, I'm going to bother you about it because these are the types of situations where you really have to say, you know, you can't have our headquarters to build a, a private condo, you know, and the, the other side of the vision is, well, why not? They can have a couple of uh, floors in between, but why should they? Why not make that building like teacher housing for everything that they need if that's the kind of public private partnership, but none of that kind of stuff happens. So I know that we have Stella on the line, which is probably going to make Russell happy that he's not on the hot seat surrounding that development. Stella? Yes, hi, how are you? I'm good. I haven't seen you in a while. You must be so proud I of know. Guido. I am. Oh, yes, I am, of course. And, uh, well, let me tell you, two of my favorite people together now, huh? <laughs> over there, you and Russ. Thank you. Listen, I've seen you in action. You are one of the most am amazing mothers. Guido is, a t Guido is the product of that. But between you and Russell both, I mean, your son is a tremendous talent. He really is. And and do you want to tell us a little bit about the, uh, Russell Rywell's influence in your Absolutely. life and the speech and debate program and rowing? He did everything with Guido. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, but if this is not about Guido. This is about us. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, you know, um, when um, Guido was in eighth grade at Norilos Middle School, he said, Last, uh, next year when I'm going to Beach High, I'm going to be part of the speech and debate team. And I've never heard of that. And I said, what, what do you want to do now, you know? So we said, well, they have an amazing coach, and I want to be part of that team, and I want to, you know, I want to be the best. I said, well, whatever, let's see what it's how, you know, how it is. So that's the way I uh, met Russ Rival. And, of course, once again, my kid was right. I mean, he really, um, Russ really was um, instrumental in my kid's life. And uh, I can tell you that... Um, like a big part of what Guido has accomplished is because of Russ. So I think this is a great opportunity for me to tell everybody that um, he is um, the best person to vote for school board. This is not just, we are not talking about, I mean, he's, he's not a, a person that it's in, in politics. He's not there for the money. And um, really, he has the best interest in, in mind. I mean, and that's the, the, the students and the teachers. No, he's put in the time and we've both seen it. We've seen the hours that he has put in on Saturday mornings at 7 a.m. weekends throughout the school year uh, over the summer. Uh, he's really worked hard with our children. And I know for a fact that I've seen him not just influence Guido's life and Pablo's life, but also Alex Scher and Scott and so many so many students. I mean, Cheska, they're all at my house all the time, Stella. That's why, you know. I, I know, I know. I, I know they are. I know they are. Uh -huh. And uh, listen, I mean, when you see those kids, those kids campaign for us. And I mean, the, the kids didn't do it because Russ asked. They were the one that offered to do it for him. So that, that you know, that means something, right? I mean, me, like, if, if it, I don't care about my teacher, why in the world I'm going to do that? Those kids, you know, they, they were everywhere. They were knocking at doors. They were making calls. I mean, this is something uh, really, I don't think that many, many candidates have, can say that, right, that they have the kids behind. And uh, I would like for everybody to know that uh, this is just the best option. It's not that he knows um, about um, teachers and about students, but also, you know, this is a really, really tough situation um, about money. And he has the background to manage this. This is very important, too. No, we need good people on the school board. Uh, we need people who are not influenced by special interests, who didn't have to take large campaign donations. And I know that you were self-funded. You did not have to depend on it. It's a bit, it's, and that's a big deal. And, I, and you just, it's not, you actually walk the walk. You're not just talking. I've seen the hard work that you put in. And sometimes I felt exhausted for you when Pablo would be telling me on a Saturday morning at 7 a.m. that he was heading to Beach High. I just I was very impressed by the amount of work that you put in over decades now. 
So yeah, yeah, you know, it's it's difficult when you're at a tournament and it's running late and you're telling the students like it's ten o'clock or nine thirty, you got to go back home and then you got to wake up and be back at you know seven thirty or eight o'clock. It, it, it's tiring for everybody. And I also would be remiss if I didn't point out that people like Stella have been there judging at the tournaments. The parents really put in a lot of time, and Stella, through her work with the the PTSA in trying to make sure that they supported our program and really got it going. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's that kind of support that really enables us to work with the kids. And that's the same thing that, that needs to happen on the school board. You know, you have to build a team of support from all different places to really affect change and, and make things uh, really work for the students. No, and there's a lot of room for improvement. And I do think that extracurricular activities are one avenue into really making students to changing lives. Yes. One thing to sit in a classroom and we're always talking about the curriculum and what happens in the classroom, but it's really about what happens when you leave the school at the end of the day, where do you go after school and what are you doing after school? And if we have enrichment activities that improve lives, we can make a real difference. So thank you for calling in, Stella. If, you make it could, so hard to speak for <laughs> if, if I could say one thing you know, to Stella and that point that what you're saying is actually the student that knocked on my door at one o'clock in the morning was Stella's son. But, um, <laughs> you know, but we are debating Amazing. a national, um, a national um, popular vote and um, her son actually read an entire book on the National uh, Popular Vote Compact, which is a system between the states to enact it. I mean, imagine that. Like, I couldn't assign in a regular class, read this entire book, you know, by this weekend so that we can incorporate it. But because of the magic of the extracurricular activity and the way the students are motivated, that's the, the huge benefit of it. You can get them to learn so much more. I do feel that Russell will be a tremendous asset. Stella, thank you for calling in. Um, thank you so much uh, for, for calling in. And Russell, thank you for joining us today here on The Bottom Line. So uh, we are voting for school board in this upcoming election. Remember to cast your votes. And also remember, if you can, uh, to, I have Joe Biden signs. I have vote no signs. I have Donna Shalala signs at my house. So reach out, send me a message. Uh, give me a call if you have I my number, and I'll bring Russ them over. Russ Rywell signs. Oh, Russ Rywell signs as well. And uh, next week, I believe we're going over. I'm going over the uh, constitutional amendments on the ballot, and and possibly have Lucia Baez Geller on the show as well. So uh, stay tuned for next week. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties, and Russell, thank you for coming on, and good luck in this election. Thank you. Thank you. Salon. Well, I'm sorry about the quality. I don't know what happened. We'll upload the video. No problem. Later. So, and, um, um, I hope that I got across what yeah. you know is important in our kids' education and what we need on the school board. I think if we could get kids involved in extracurricular activities, if you could make that happen, there's so much improvement that, that could happen at the school board level. You know, it's it's when I was president of the alumni association, which we didn't even get into. Um, so many people from my age, younger, into their 80s, 90s, when they come and talk to you, you know, what do they talk about? They say, like, debate changed my life. The band changed my life. Rock ensemble changed my life. Being on the football team changed my life. Uh, acting in the school plays. Like, these are the things that people really remember and got out of high school. If we lose that, then... So if you get elected to the school board, you or, or Lucia, whomever, um, will you leave your job then, obviously, and you'll be full-time school board member, or how will that work? This has actually been sorted out with Martin Karp, mm -hmm. who was also a teacher when he won. Um, because the school board approves the labor contract, mm -hmm. you can't be a teacher and on the board at the same time. So you have to take sort of rolling leaves of absences. But my plan would be to volunteer 